everything I do, I do it for this channel. And in 1991, one of the top songs in the United States was Everything I Do, I Do It For You. Also in 1991, George Herbert Walker Bush was the President of the United States and the Cold War was coming to an end. And in 1991, the aircraft that I'm about to fly on today was delivered to Northwest Airlines. That makes the aircraft that I am flying on today quite old. Eventually that aircraft transitioned into Delta Airlines fleet where it's been ever since. I'll be boarding it a little bit later on. But with the refurbished interiors of these aircraft, nobody will know how old the aircraft is. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's time for another flight out of LaGuardia Airport. Today we'll be taking off on runway 13. <music> As usual, I'm gonna bring the full flight to you as I always do because I know you like that. And as usual, I check the wind before my flight. The wind conditions today are favorable for aircraft to depart on runway 13 with arrivals landing on runway 22. I'm seated in the first class cabin on the right hand side of the aircraft on my A320 today. And I'm hoping to fly the Whitestone climb. The Whitestone climb calls for a right hand turn after departure and then a left hand turn. My flight is actually departing out of the older D-Gates, but I am taking a walk down the newer D-Gate concourse just so I can spot some of the aircraft that are taking off on runway 13 today. The official navigational charts describe the Whitestone climb as follows. Climbing right turn to heading 180 to LaGuardia 2.5 DME, then turn left heading 040, maintain 5000. We'll talk more about the Whitestone climb once we take off. Okay, well, I always make sure that I check out this part of the airport when I'm here, just because I want to be able to see the departures off of runway one and three. Again, my flight is departing out of the old gates in the D concourse. Today, my initial departure fix is going to be Newell. My destination is Minneapolis, St. Paul. From my destination of Minneapolis, St. Paul, we normally take off and fly towards the Northwest, towards Gale intersection, but there's some weather up there today. So today we'll be flying towards Newell. This isn't my airplane, but considering how old my plane is, this is a young one at only 14 years old. The plane I'll be taking is 17 years older than this one. But before I head to my gate, why not have some pizza? Any connection between pizza and my plane? Well, in 1991, the movie Pizza Man came out, and that was the same year my plane made its first flight. All right, it is time to head over to my gate to meet my aircraft that was delivered in 1991. What were you doing in 1991? In 1991, I was probably looking at 727s and DC-9s flying around the USA. Here are some events that happened in 1991. This plane looks brand new. Delta does an amazing job at keeping their fleet look current, and this 31-year-old airplane is no exception. The plane is so clean. I don't think I've ever seen a dirty Delta A320. In 1991, it was painted in Northwest colors until 2009 when Northwest was absorbed into Delta, and it's been sporting Delta colors ever since. Only a handful of Delta A320s are this old, but you'd never be able to differentiate between the oldest Delta A320 from the newest. Well, you would never know by looking. 1991, can you believe it? I can't. Let's head on over to the gate. Today, this aircraft will be operating with the call sign Delta 687 with the destination of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Let's get on board this old plane. Okay, I'm ready to board here at gate D9, Delta 9. Yeah, I'm just one of those rats that likes to hang out at the gate. I wanna be the first on. I am in the first row, so I do wanna make sure that I have enough space 
Okay, I have started the queue here for departure at gate number D9 at LaGuardia Airport. I'm very excited about my flight today. All right, this is it, the airplane that was built in 1991. You would never know from the exterior or the interior that this is a very old airplane, one of the oldest aircraft in Delta's fleet, and I'm on it right now. I'm just happy to know that this airplane is still safe and airworthy. There are so many Delta A320s out there. And it is this A320 that's going to take me to the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. What's my first step? Open the window, of course. What's the oldest aircraft type that you've flown on? Let me know in the comment section below. I can't wait to take you flying with me. A nice A220 out there. One of the benefits of sitting on the right-hand side of the aircraft when runway 13 is being used for departures is that the wing is gonna dip to the right and you're gonna get a very nice view of Flushing Bay and Manhattan will be in the distance. Okay, as of now, the wind is coming from 140 degrees, which favors runway 22 for the arrival runway and runway 13 for departure runway. I think it's gonna hold steady for the next uh, 20, 30 minutes or so by the time we come airborne. going to Minneapolis. Getting ready to close the door here in just about 10 minutes. Pushing back, uh, kind of a quick taxi for LaGuardia. It's about a 15 minute taxi to our turn on the runway. Once we do take off, flying time is two hours and 24 minutes. Actually a nice day to fly. Uh, nothing more than just light little bumps coming out of here. Maybe a little bit more on the descent, but uh, nothing more than just light. Today's cruising altitude is 34,000 feet. We'll be able to get the seatbelt signs off for you. Just do me a favor, keep your seatbelt fastened even if the sign's off. So once again, two hours, 24 minutes flight time and welcome aboard. With the final bags loaded onto this old plane, all doors, including the cargo door and main boarding door are shut. Ground crew gets into position and we work our way backwards by means of a tug. Not only are we on an old airplane, we're looking at an even older terminal. We just pulled out of the old Terminal D building, which was opened in 1983. This structure, still in use at the time of filming, will eventually be demolished. It will be replaced by a new concourse being built on the other side. Here's an airplane identical to ours. It's another oldie being built in 1992. Looks so new though. Once we're in position to taxi to the runway, the tug is removed and the ground staff moves clear of our A320. We're now ready to contact LaGuardia Airport Ground Control. We're told to take taxiway Bravo toward runway 13. Our CFM engines are powering us on the ground. Just think how many cycles like this this aircraft has been through. Our route today takes us parallel to our departure runway in the opposite direction, all the way to runway 13. From here, we can see aircraft landing on runway 22. The runway will have to cross twice, once by taxiing across it and another time on our takeoff roll. For nearly every arrival on runway 22, there's a departure that's issued takeoff clearance on runway 13. Once this Pilatus passed in front of us, we were asked to taxi across runway 22 and switch radio frequencies to the controller in charge of runway 22 and 13 tonight. Traffic on this evening was particularly light, so the controller had us line up and wait on runway 13 right away and informed us about traffic landing on runway 22. Eventually, the aircraft that landed on runway 22 passed the intersection, and then we were cleared for takeoff on runway 13. Runway 13 is 7,000 feet long. A320 engines have a really unique sound, and I'm sitting as far forward as possible to hear them. Listen to this.
are now airborne. Just think that this exact aircraft has been doing this for 31 years. And today, tail number November 320 Uniform Sierra gets to fly the Whitestone Climb. As I mentioned earlier, this climb out requires a right-hand turn to 180 degrees or south. We'll have to hold this heading until 2.5 miles away from the LaGuardia VOR, a navigational aid located by the runway 22 pier. It's at that point where we'll start a left turn to 40 degrees or northeast. The initial right-hand turn places us over Flushing Meadows Corona Park before we turn over more populated areas. Initially, in our climb out, our targeted altitude is 5,000 feet, but the controller will often immediately assign a higher altitude depending on how many other aircraft are in the area. For example, flights may be passing through the area at 9,000 feet, so the controller may only have us climb to 8,000 feet. While in this controller's airspace, we can climb as high as 15,000 feet upon receiving clearance to do so. We're in complex airspace here. Let's listen again to those engines as we turn to the northeast. For this particular flight, the controller actually has us keep turning to the left because that's where our initial departure fix of Newell is, and there's really no need for us to continue to the northeast. As I mentioned when we were on the ground, traffic is light today. We'll be circling around LaGuardia Airport to the left as we complete an almost full circle in the airspace to the east of the airport. Just think how many times this aircraft has taken off and majestically risen to the skies. Countless times, I'm sure, over the course of its 31 years of flying life, and she's still flying strong. Believe it or not, in Delta's fleet there are actually a few aircraft that are even older than this one, but not many. There are some Boeing 757s and 767s that have been flying for a little longer than this airplane, but for Delta's Airbus fleet, the A320 is the oldest type, with this airplane being one of the oldest. I don't think there are many airlines out there that have A320s that are this old. So what do you think about the future of these old airplanes? Will Delta retire them soon? Delta recently rid its fleet of the MD-88 and MD-90. They were a joy to fly on, but there came a time when they just weren't fuel efficient enough for the airline, so they were removed from the fleet. Delta, of course, is adding newer and more modern aircraft to their fleet, like the A220 and A350, as well as the most recent addition, the Airbus A321neo. So if you fly Delta, you could possibly find yourself on a plane that's over 30 years of age or brand new. We're continuing to the west now, and out the window we see the New York City borough of the Bronx. LaGuardia Airport is just off the left side of the airplane, almost below us. So you can see how the climb out takes us to practically where we began the airborne portion of our flight. Our A320 practically made a 360. In a few moments we'll be proceeding directly toward our departure fix of Newell, which is located over North Bangor, Pennsylvania. Then we'll continue on our more southern than usual route to Minneapolis this evening. The controller is having us climb higher and higher, and we can still hear the distinctive sound of the A320 engines as we get closer and closer to our cruising altitude. The A320 has a unique sound, and even when I'm on the ground, I know when an A320 is passing overhead. It just sounds different. Here we get to fly over the northern portion of Manhattan and then the Hudson River with New Jersey on the other side. It's at this point the departure controller hands us off to another departure controller before we enter the airspace of the air route traffic control centers throughout the United States. higher while over the state of New Jersey and as I look down I see Teterboro Airport. This A320, even having been airworthy for three decades, has never landed at Teterboro. Teterboro is a general aviation airport, meaning that airline service isn't offered there. On the left side of the airplane is Newark Airport, one of the major passenger airline airports of the region. I really enjoy looking down from my window seat, but I just don't limit myself to identifying the sights on the ground. 
There are exciting things to see up here too, like this Alaska Airlines aircraft coming in from the west coast to JFK Airport. It's flying above us and will descend over New York City in a moment. We can't climb higher until we're clear of this arrival path to JFK. We've now advanced to Pennsylvania and have reached our cruising altitude. Flight attendants have been preparing meals for the first class passengers, so it's time to enjoy some A320 dinner service. As we continue along, I was able to identify Cleveland, Ohio down below. And on the shore of Lake Erie, I could see Cleveland's Burke Lakefront Airport. Like Teterboro, it's general aviation only. Right after that, I saw the much larger Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. I'm all about airports, so I made sure I looked out the window when flying by Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport. There's no doubt that this aircraft has been there many times in the last three decades. After Michigan, we began our crossing of Lake Michigan towards the Wisconsin coast. The crossing takes about 10 minutes from the east shore to the west shore. Under the moon, we eventually began our descent into the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. This was a fantastic flight, and I actually enjoyed being on this old but new-looking airplane. The Delta A320s out there have some of the nicest cabin interiors of the entire Delta fleet, and it makes for a really enjoyable flight. I doubt that most passengers aboard the plane knew how old this plane was, as it looks just like any other Delta airplane. I also doubt that most passengers did not know that we're setting up for an approach to runway 30 left today. For me, knowing about your plane and understanding where you are makes the flight so much more enjoyable. Yes, that first class dinner was great, and I'm sure many of the passengers will remember the flight for the meal, but for me, it's the fact that I got to fly on a piece of active history. Oh, and what's interesting is that I got to fly in the same exact airplane about one week later. Here's to the A320. Let's land.
Minneapolis, St. Paul, with a local time is 7.36 p.m. Well, we are on the ground at MSP. There's something about this airport that I love. It's big as it's a hub for Delta, but it still has an intimate and relaxing feel at the same time. Let's pull into the gate. All right, well, I'm on the ground here at the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. What a great departure out of LaGuardia. I hope you enjoyed flying the Whitestone climb today. The airplane I flew on today, that very old aircraft, started off in Sacramento, California, went to Minneapolis, then it went to LaGuardia, back to Minneapolis with me aboard, and now it's going over to Texas. Well, I really hope you enjoyed my flight today. I really enjoyed sharing the Whitestone climb out of LaGuardia with you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not a subscriber. Hit that like button, hit that bell button, and be assured that I'll be here again with many more videos for all of you. Thanks everybody and see you soon.